Kira, I'm Anna Ferguson from uh, the Department of Statistics at the University of Auckland and this is just a quick video to introduce you to exploring data with Insight Lite. So, so Insight Lite is the online web-based version of Insight and there is a bit of information here on the about page about the tool. There's also an, um, an email address here which you can use to send back any feedback or any um, problems you come across while using the tool. Uh, you may or may not be aware that Professor Chris Wilde, who leads the project for Insight, also has a YouTube channel. Uh, which he has shared a bunch of his videos, not just from the MOOC uh, Data to Insight um, that he's been running for many years now, but also specifically about using Insight and using Insight Lite. So that's another resource that you can use if you're wanting more information past this intro video. But I want to first focus on one way that I've found really effective for getting data into Insight Lite, particularly with working with students online, and that's to create a data Insight Lite. This is a link that you can uh, use with students that say, the chat um, option if you're doing a live lecture, or maybe through email, or maybe in a Google Doc as part of an assessment task, that'll give students access to both Insight Lite but also the data at the same time. And how that works is that you take this basic sort of shell or template for a URL, um, and what you want to do is replace this part here with the website address or another URL for the CSV file, which has to be hosted publicly online somewhere. So for example, let's say you've been like searching for data online, you've come across a really awesome data set that's sitting on a website, and it finishes with .csv, so you know it's an actual CSV file, then what you can do is set up a URL here where you replace um, what I've highlighted here with that URL, and then when uh, students click on that link, it'll take them straight through the Insight Lite with the data loaded and straight into the visualization tab, which is where they can make plots. And that feature in itself is pretty cool, uh, but it's even cool if you combine it with something like a Google form or a Google sheet, um, because you might have data of your own already that you want to use. So for this video, I did a quick survey a couple of days ago and asked um, people on Twitter and Facebook <laughs> to fill out some questions about their phone. Are you also can use the survey if you want to, that's the bit.ly address there, and uh, if you share it with your students or with your friends, we can get even more data for the survey. And this is the survey here. Uh, so just a few questions, a mix of some categorical and numeric data, just so I had some variables we could play around with an insight. Uh, so um, I know many of you are familiar with Google Forms before, so you know that the um, answers that come in, you can use to set up a spreadsheet or a Google Sheet of results. And what we want to do is make a connection between the data in this Google Sheet so that we can use it in Insight Lite. And the cool thing about setting up this data URL to Insight Lite is that you can, and I use this all the time in live lectures, is you can set up a Google form um, and use it in the lecture and then straight away use the data because you can set up the link even before there's even any data in it and it will work because it will update the data as it comes in. So what you need is to publish your Google Sheet as a CSV. And this might be a Google Sheet, like I said, that is, is the responses for a form, or it might be a Google Sheet that you have just set up, that you've copied in some data that you already had that you want students to use. The process works the same. How you do that is you go to File and Publish to the Web. And then under here, what's really important is that you want to choose which sheet that is that you want to publish, because of course you're publishing just a single table of values. So under here, I would select, I'm going to select Data, because I haven't published this one yet. Um, and then here, I want to make sure I select the option that says CSV there. And then I press Publish. And I go, OK, cool. Now, at any point, I can turn this off. If I wanted to only have it open, let's say, for an assessment or for an activity, if I turn it off later, it won't work anymore. But for now, I'm going to say OK. Um, and then this whole link here, <laughs> which is a pretty hideous uh, URL, but it will work the same as before. I can use that URL. I can insert it in the URL to Insight, and it will appear when I click through. Let's go through that process again of creating this uh, data Insight Lite URL. So we take the basic template, so we take the basic URL um, template, and we replace uh, this part of the CSV with this lovely um, URL from Google, which is for the published CSV form of your um, Google Sheet. And then that gives you this whole <laughs> even more lovelier URL. Uh, that you can use with students. And if you want to, um, you can always use one of those uh, URL shorteners like bit.ly or tinycc to hide it uh, behind something that looks a bit more attractive. But again, like if you're just going to share it in a chat box during a Zoom or, or meet kind of um, a lesson, then it doesn't really matter what it looks like, right? Students will just click it and take it through the data. And you're welcome to use this bit.ly um, 
there are by the way to access the data from the survey which will be updated as people um, complete the survey so let's jump into insight with this data now and see what we can learn so because we've put the at land equals visualize at the end of this url let me just go over and show you what i mean here this part here this and land equals visualize it's going to jump straight into the visualize tab of insight light which is where we're going to make plots see summary stats and add any other information to our plots that we might need. How Insight Lite works is that it tries to detect what kind of variable um, you've selected and then um, make a plot, like a default plot that goes with that variable. So this variable here, the type of phone, is a categorical variable, and so Insight has detected that that should be um, a bar chart of proportions. And we can see that just over 50%, maybe 55%, of the respondents to my survey so far have said that they have Android phones. And if we go to the summary tab, we can see that it's, well, 55.8%. Um, uh, so that's like a, just a, the standard default plot for categorical data. For numeric data, if we were to select that, this is the question about uh, what percentage of battery their phone had at that point in time when they did the survey. Um, Insight will create a, a dot plot and a box plot together on the same visualization by default, which is a really cool sort of default option because of course we want students to see both representations and see how they're complementary but also see them as separate separate representations so they're not overlapping they're two separate plots on the same um, on the same visualization uh, and um, if we wanted to compare then if we were to add another variable let's say the type of phone back on again insight uh, automatically decides that that should be side by side dot plots and box plots and um, presents the data to you accordingly. So it's a really fast way to get uh, good default graphics to, to match the kind of data that you're exploring. And that's one of the philosophies of this tool is to um, have as few barriers as possible for students to get in and start exploring data. Um, of course, as you would expect, if I was to select two numeric variables, let's say percentage battery and the hour submitted, um, then I would get a scatter plot, although uh, this data doesn't look like it's revealing that much about the relationship between the hours and the percentage battery, which, to be honest, in the times that we are right now, perhaps isn't uh, that so unsurprising, given that uh, we can plug our phones in whenever we want to at the moment, since we're all pretty much at home. Um, just to show you one other feature is, let's say you wanted to do a third variable, let's say compare this relationship by another variable you could use the subsetting option here so I, I might want to compare between Android and iPhone this sort of non-existent <laughs> or doesn't look like much of a relationship between uh, the hours submitted and the percentage battery um, so that just shows you some of the basic ways of making plots in Insight there's a whole bunch of other visualizations other types of graphics that you could explore but I'm not going to focus on that in this video I just want to show you how to get the other kinds of things you might be looking for uh, when using this tool at the high school level. So if I go back to um, this graphic here where I'm comparing a numeric variable across two groups or two levels of a categorical variable. Now this data itself isn't necessarily appropriate for um, sample to population inference, but let's say you're wanting to use this tool um, to carry out a sample to population inference involving informal confidence intervals or ICIs, um, curriculum level seven. So we're wanting to um, decide if one population medium is higher than another population medium. So anything extra that you want to add to a plot or modify it is going to be under this add to plot tab here. Um, so if I want to add inference information, I would choose the add, inf add inference information from the drop down menu. And then I would say, well, look, I'm after parameters, which are medians, so I click on there. And this will uh, automatically add you what we call the year 12 inference, which is these informal confidence intervals um, shown in red. And of course, of course the, the drive of the curriculum level 5, 6 and 7 rules of thumb in the, in the sample to population inference pathway is that this is a visual based um, comparison. So we look at whether these ICIs overlap or not. Uh, to get the actual values for those ICIs, you'll click on the get values and they would appear here on the left hand side. Um, so another thing you might want to do, let's say at year 13, when we're looking at linear regression models, is how do you get a linear model fitted? So if I go back and again choose two numeric variables that are not looking super like you would want to investigate a linear model, but just to show you how this works, I would go to add to plot, 
um, and I would here do the trend line and curves option and then I could click linear and this would fit <laughs> an unsurprisingly uninformative line to this data. Uh, to get the equation of that line uh, uh, it's under the summary tab and the summary tab actually I didn't show you before but the summary tab is going to give you your summary stats or in this case here when you fit a linear model it's going to give you the equation of that line and also your correlation coefficient here, the linear correlation of negative 0.06. Uh, so yeah, if I just pop back here for a second and show you this this plot here, um, again if you go to summary you're going to see uh, the summary stats for those two groups for Android versus iPhone for just these responses that we've received so far in terms of people's uh, battery percentages. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of other options here under Add to Plot. You can do things with axes and labels. You can change those if you need to. Uh, you can also do a bunch of stuff here with color. If I just go back here, you can uh, do a whole bunch of stuff with the background color, uh, with the <laughs> points themselves, how big they are, um, the color of them, where you fill them in. I mean, there's lots of things to get distracted by if you want to. Um, and there's also other plots that you could start to explore in terms of other ways to show this data. Um, these are recent additions, um, just to sort of broaden the type of visualizations that we're getting students to be familiar with and to build their graphicacy skills. Hopefully that's enough to get you started with Insight Light. If you have any questions, you're um, more than welcome to get in touch. I also have a blog for statistics teachers called Teaching Statistics is Awesome, uh, which may have some other resources that might be useful for you during this time. Um, and I've now been teaching online for two weeks and so once I get myself sorted a little bit more I will have some more resources that I've developed specifically for uh, working with my students in an online uh, remote learning environment.